everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today i have your survivor series 2021 full show review and results if you guys don't know how these videos work basically we're going to run down the entire survivor series card breaking down the entire show and pretty much just giving you my full analysis on the show what i thought of the matches what i thought of the outcomes where i think we go from here was the show good was it shitty was it somewhere in between we will find out in this video man we're going to break it down and, and i'm going to take you through every single match and break down all the matchups coming in not that hyped, but I thought that the Survivor Series match in itself was pretty stacked. Like, I thought both teams were pretty good outside of maybe one member of the teams. Team Raw was loaded up with some of my favorite superstars. We had some good representation on SmackDown, except for him. And it was just, uh, it was a pretty, not the best build of all time, but you know what, man? We had some good stuff on this card that I was excited about. Some stuff I wasn't so excited about. And let's just dive into everything and find out if the show was worth a shish or not. So with all that being said, let's dive into Survivor Series 2021 and break down all the action. So starting things off with the kickoff show, man, we had the Intercontinental versus United States Champion versus Champion matchup. Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Damian Priest. A match on paper that was pretty, you know, uh, one that I was kind of excited for just because both of them have like a similar offense, right? Knees and kicks and long leg strikes and just very good in the ring, I'd say, for both of these guys. So I was very excited coming into it. It was a very fun matchup. I enjoyed the thing and it was enjoyable up until the point. I, I kind of like this. I kind of don't, you know, they kind of bailed themselves out here because at the end of the matchup, Damian Priest ends up using the guitar of Shinsuke Nakamura's sidekick and blasting him in the face and getting a DQ there, which was pretty cool seeing Damian Priest bust the V-neck guitar in half, which was kind of cool. However, it was, you know, kind of a bailout from the scenario. Neither champion getting pinned. I understand it, but at the end of the day, what are you going to do, Brad? Shinsuke Nakamura and, or Shinsuke Nakamura pretty much wins by disqualification, but this matchup was solid up until that. I don't like that they had this matchup on the pre-show, but wait, I I mean, we're pretty much over this, man. We're like a decade into them doing this to the kickoff show and the championship. So, I mean, I, what, what am I even complaining about? So, we kick the main show off with the women's championships. The Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, taking on Charlotte Flair, the SmackDown Women's Champion. And I expected nothing less from this match than how good it was because you guys know how these things work, right? I mean, they're, they're always putting on bangers. Two of the best women's wrestlers on the planet. They're going to give you good business here. And that's exactly what they did. Charlotte in the black gear. Becky in a very rare, like... Like, I don't know, like, somebody told me it was supposed to be, like, Christina Aguilera versus Britney Spears or something was the inspiration behind this gear. But it was very outside the box for Becky Lynch. I don't think I've ever seen her wear something like that. It was kind of more revealing on that side rather than, you know, more of the, I guess you would say, I don't know. It was just, it was a lot, it kind of reminded me of, like, Lana's gear or something. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. I did like the red, however. It was pretty cool to see that represent Team Raw. She came out there, beat ass, and actually defeated Charlotte Flair. This was a very fun matchup. It was good back and forth. I thought the energy in the building was really good. You could kind of feel the animosity in the arena. Really good stuff here, but Becky Lynch does get the roll-up win on Charlotte Flair, and uh, it was a good match, man. I thought this started off the show really well. It had a good pace to it. Back and forth moves. All the good stuff that you would expect out of the, all the things you would expect out of these two. So I can't complain, man. It was a good match, but Becky Lynch wins, and I agree with the scenario there. Well, I did not expect this, man, but the men's traditional Survivor Series matchup, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, was next. I did I expected it to maybe main event the show, but uh, one thing that I had in the back of my mind is I predicted The Rock to show up on this show, and that if Roman versus Big E were the main event, then that then The Rock would probably show up. Will that happen? We'll have to see through the rest out of the show there, but Team Raw, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, and Seth Rollins loaded up with some of my favorite guys. Jeff Hardy, Drew McIntyre, King Woods, Sheamus, and Trash Happy Corbin make up Team SmackDown here. So, Raw versus SmackDown coming in. My prediction for the Soul Survivor was Jeff Hardy. Felt like he would line up great for Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. I think that would be a match that a lot of people would want to see for the Rumble. So, that was my prediction coming in. This was a solid little matchup. Uh, how the matchup started was very weird. Kevin Owens, you know, before the show, he was all like, I'm all about my team. I'm all about, you know, proving, you know, I'm the man and I want to be there for my team and be everything that I need to be. And then uh, as soon as the matchup starts, he pleads with his team to be the, you know, the first one to lead off the team. He rolls out of the ring and gets counted out at 10 and just walks off the stage and is eliminated like that. I didn't know where that was or what that was. Guess he's going to AEW. I don't know what the hell's going on. That'd be so sick. What if he did that, like, for real? Like, nobody even, like, what if that wasn't booked that way? He just walked out and got eliminated and everybody really was baffled 
scaffold on what to do. That would be kind of cool, but Kevin Owens eliminates himself, and he is gone. This matchup was pretty fun back and forth. We had some good stuff all in all. I appreciated the matchup. We had some slow moments here and there, but I thought the action was good. I'd say a little over halfway through, the thing really picked up, man. Like, tons of action back and forth. Everybody looked good in their stuff. I thought that everybody got their stuff in. Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre pretty much count themselves out. I'm gonna put KO right back in here right there. But we pretty much fight it out. We have some good action all in between. I thought Sheamus looked really good. It was a really weird final five. What do you guys think? Finn Balor, Austin Theory, and Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. That was the final the final five right there, which I thought was pretty weird. But Brogue kick to Finn Balor, eliminating him. So Austin Theory and Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. Some great back and forth. Everybody's doing their stuff. Jeff Hardy, it is down to just him after the elimination to Sheamus. So we had Austin Theory and Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy. It would eventually come down to Jeff Hardy and Seth Rollins. The crowd was super over for Jeff. I thought he was going to pull it off. I even tweeted out, you know, if Jeff Hardy is the sole survivor, I'll even shout everybody, I'll shout everybody out who retweets this tweet. It got a few hundred retweets there and it did not, it uh, didn't come to fruition, man. Did not happen. Jeff Hardy does fail. He gets curb stomped to oblivion after a failed attempt at a swanton bomb. Seth Rollins gets the knees up, curb stomped to the skull, and Team Raw wins. So, the only thing I can really say about this is I'm happy that Seth Rollins picks up the win for Raw. That kind of puts him in the driver's seat over there as the top star, as it should. And Jeff Hardy was still the last guy remaining on SmackDown, so he's owed something, right? Which would be a title shot with Roman Reigns coming up. So, I think that will be what we get. So, I think that's what we're leading to. Not the best Survivor Series match by Lions Landslide, but it had some good moments here and there. Not really that memorable, I don't think. That, nothing that memorable. I think if Jeff Hardy were to survive, I think it would have been pretty memorable. But, pretty fun match here and there, but Team Raw does get the win with Seth Rollins there, and we'll have to see where that goes. But Jeff Hardy did look good in defeat. I was cheering for him the whole way, but he comes up just short. Next up, guys, was the survival of the fittest. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. It was the 25-man Battle of the Brands. Brand Supremacy Battle Royal Pizza Hut Triple Decker Stacks. I don't know what the hell is going on with this, man. This Battle Royal was an absolute train wreck. Honestly, I did not enjoy it, you know? Had some super set. Like, I know how we talk about, you know, WWE, or no, we talk about AEW having a really lackluster roster on some of the bottom half. Like, a lot of guys where you're just like, eh, who is that? Or, like, some nobody names are just like, eh. That's kind of like in this Battle Royal, you kind of realize that WWE has a lot of those names too. But in this Battle Royal, I mean, there were some key moments here and there, some cool moves here and there. They had pizza at ringside. It was a heavily sponsored Battle Royal by Pizza Hut and their triple treat box deal. Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins out there slinging pizzas into the crowd, but pretty much Omos wins this thing, man. Omos comes out, he dominates, he wins it, he last eliminates Ricochet. I thought they were going to give Ricochet a little crowning jewel moment there. Didn't happen, Brad. He came out out there and got smacked on like he he I wanted him to showcase like a little David and Goliath there wasn't happening man got destroyed got eliminated and so yeah Omos wins the battle royal I, it didn't mean really much my favorite part was just Montez Ford and the street profits chunking pizza into the stands man that was pretty much my favorite part of the entire deal however that was it man Omos wins the battle royal and I can't really say much else I I, I don't know man what did you guys think I thought it was awful next up guys we had the Raw versus the Smackdown Tag Team Championship match. Not a championship match, just the champions facing off. Of course, it's Survivor Series, right? We had RK, bro, taking on the Usos. I knew it would be good, but damn, bro, this was a really fun match. Really great matchup, man. Back and forth. Two of the better teams, I'd say. Probably the two best teams right now in WWE. Just going at it. It was super fun. Very classic. It, it picked up a ton of steam. Randy Orton, you know, with all the praise he was getting going into Survivor Series, you know, with the Survivor Series pay-per-view record and all these different things. Crowd was super hyped for him. He looked fantastic. Matt Riddle did really well. Usos looked sick, and they're all whites. It was just a really good match, man. Probably my favorite match of the night so far, if I'm not mistaken. But the matchup ends when the Usos did not see Randy Orton get the uh, get the legal tag. So I think it was Jimmy went up for a splash, and you know what happened, Brad. He caught him with an RKO out of midair, out of nowhere. One, two, three, RK bro win. Really sick, really cool to like give Randy the nod there because of the history, because of all of those things. That was really sick for me. I loved it as a massive Randy Orton fan, one of my favorites of all time. That was really, really cool to see. His timing's just so perfect, man. What a beautiful looking shot. What a beautiful match. It was just fun all together. I would say go back 
and watch this one. If you go back and watch any matchup, this would probably be the one, at least to this point in a night. Really fun. RK Bro get the victory, and I agree with it. Have no problems with that, and they don't look like they're breaking up anytime soon. Really, really nice stuff. Next up, guys, was the women's side of the traditional Survivor Series Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. We had Team SmackDown, Sasha Banks, Shayna Baszler, Natalia, Tony Storm, and Shotzi Blackheart taking on Team Raw of Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, and Zelina Vega. Now, this matchup was very slow paced. It was very, very boring, in my opinion. Like, it, it took a while to get going, man. The crowd was doing the wave at one point in this matchup. Just not a good Survivor Series matchup, in my opinion. It was just very boring. I wasn't invested in it whatsoever. However, you know, the story of the matchup kind of was just that Bianca Belair became outnumbered. It was like four on one, Team SmackDown to Team Raw. And... Bianca Belair overcomes all the odds. She ends up beating all of them one by one, just taking down the tower a little bit at a time, you know, one little tick at a time, and she did it. She overcame all the odds, making Bianca Belair's case just stronger and stronger, man. She has been built up like a superstar, as she should, and she's been dominant, man. She laid the wood in this thing, took out every member of Team SmackDown practically by herself, and it was pretty sweet to see. Team Raw, I'm pretty sure it's like undefeated. Am I wrong? Like, did they lose one matchup? Team Raw has been completely dominant. Don't know if that That'll play a storyline role, but uh, probably not. Let's be real with you, man. But this pay-per-view, doesn't it just embody WWE, right? Like, they don't really care about creating these memorable storylines and matches anymore, man. They're, they will sacrifice talent. They will sacrifice, you know, good wrestling television, good stories, real emotional stories for ad revenue, man. They will, they will put a Pizza Hut ad right in the middle of their show, sacrifice the talent. Who cares about the wrestling, man? I gotta get this ad in here. And the same thing goes for the that movie, man. They, I mean, it just, it's pretty much just sums up WWE to a T, but Team Raw dominates Team SmackDown, or they were getting dominated, but then they flipped the script thanks to Bianca Belair. And for a minute, event, maybe it didn't, uh, I almost said Mateys and Lindelman or something. I don't know what I was going to say. Anyways, and for the main event, we had the Universal Championship versus WWE Championship matchup. Roman Reigns versus Big E. Very, very, very good match. Holy shiz. This matchup slapped. I think this is the match of the night after all is said and done. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely match of the night, man. What a slapper. Like, this thing, it went to the limit. Big E looked like a boss. He took three Superman punches in a row. He took a couple spears. He kicked out of the spear. Great reversals. Very physical when you got two gigantic sweaty men going at it, man. This was excellent. Great, greatly booked match. Great match overall. I had hella fun with this match. Tons of fun with this match, man. If you guys missed this one, you definitely have to check it out. You, you already know the Tribal Chief went over, as he should, right? Roman Reigns is going to win here, which makes total sense. But this was a great matchup to end a very subpar pay-per-view, I would say. Overall, the show was kind of meh. It was just very boring, honestly. Like, I enjoyed the main event, and I enjoyed the... I somewhat enjoyed the Men's Survivor Series matchup, and then I did enjoy the tag team match. But outside of that, man, very missable show. I don't think you needed to watch this show. The the first... The opening matchup was solid. It's just... I don't I don't know, man. Just overall, the show is just kind of blast. Just like nothingness, you know? I'm just ready for a new year, kind of, I think, you know? But at the end of the day, Roman Reigns does defeat Big E and a great effort. And after the show, after Roman Reigns defeats Big E, man, you won't even believe it. But out came The Rock and he hit the freaking Tribal Chief with a massive rock bottom. No, he didn't. He he wasn't there. He didn't even, he didn't show up. Dwayne The Rock Football Johnson wasn't even at the show, man. How disappointing. But you guys already know who's going to be on Monday Night Raw. So Vince McMahon said that everybody's going to be on Monday Night Raw. They got to find that egg. That egg is from The Rock's movie. And this is a way to get Roman Reigns onto Monday Night Raw. I can already imagine they were like, they were like, Dwayne, can you be at Survivor Series? And he was like, nah, I can't be there. I was like, okay, well, can you be on Friday Night SmackDown? Nah, I can't. Can, can I do Raw? And then they were like, all right, how can we get Roman Reigns onto Monday Night Raw? And they were like, what if he steals the egg from the movie that The Rock's in right now? And and then you, and and then The Rock can show up on Monday and, and fight and fight Roman and challenge him. And they're like, brilliant, book that shit right now. And that's how it was written right there. But The Rock did not show up, but Roman Reigns did and defeated Big E in a great 
matchup. But that wraps up my Survivor Series 2021 show, man. Hopefully, The Rock shows up tomorrow. Don't think I'll do a Raw review. I doubt that I do anything like that. I don't know. I might, you know. I might do a reaction to the show just in case, you know, he shows up. But we'll see about that. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, man. But that's going to wrap up my Survivor Series 2021 show review. Kind of buns overall, you know. Didn't do a lot for me there, but, you know, that's how it be sometimes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. And don't cross the line like Dwayne when he decided that he was too busy for the Survivor Series.